mentioning, you know, big thinkers and, and big ideas, explaining postmodernism, your book has explained, has given me a, an eye opener about, you know, the thinkers of, I should say, beginning, I didn't know it was so long ago that the movement began, just reading mm -hmm. it, it seemed that it was literally, a, 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 you know, equivalent of what we're seeing now with everything that's happening with postmodernism and academia. So I'd like to get on that too as well, talk with you about yeah. that. But yes. so, you know, now that academia includes postmodernism, now that academia, you know, in, I have here books from my college about Heidegger, about Nietzsche, you know, how can we engage with those thinkers where they say that there is relativism, there's just subjectivism, we should not, you know, think of science as the best tool to reach objective reality. So, you know, I'm trying to, to see if there is a Goldilocks area between subjectivism, relativism, these thinkers, postmodernism and modernism. Do you think that's mm -hmm. achievable? Um, <clears throat> well, that's an interesting question, right? So uh, one of the big things that you're grappling with then is uh, you read some of the modernist thinkers who are thinking, you know, there is a, a reality. It is what it is. Uh, we have a cognitive capacity that uh, is competent yeah. if we use it well and we can actually know the way the world works if we do some hard work. Um, but scientific method is difficult. Understanding our cognitive apparatus is complicated and we're still in the early stages. Uh, and so, but thinking that project is essentially the right project in pursuing that one mm. consistently versus at the same time, there are lots of smart people we read who are skeptical, who don't think that we can figure yeah. out anything and there are uh, lots, of course, given that our cognitive capacities are so complicated, uh, skeptical arguments you can make about the senses, about perception, about logic, language, math, experimental design, and so on. So the first time you go through all of these, uh, it's then also tempting to say, wow, it is impossible. And then so then that's the right conclusion to reach. And then you end up pursuing some kind of skepticism or relativism as, uh, as the outcome. So should you be a, a strong subjectivist and relativist? Should you be a strong objectivist and pro-reason person? Or, and then of course the third option is that you try to compromise, right? Or you mm -hmm. blend, right, the two. So what I would say is, uh, you know, since you seem to be a, a young person is, uh, uh, don't, Think that there's a, an obvious answer to that question right off the bat. I think what you do have to do as a young philosophy student is sympathetically try out all of those options. So when you are looking at the Enlightenment project, as we, as we might call it, that we are optimistic, the world works a certain way and we can figure it out, but then at the same time, we're still in the early stages. We are working out the tools of scientific method and the mathematics and the experimental design. And we are still in the early stages of psychology, you know, yeah. just understanding what's going on in our, in our minds that don't expect that uh, even if that project is the right project, that it is perfect yet, that we mm -hmm. still have a, a lot of work to do and really try that out and see where, where that goes. At the same time, you do have to look at the best skeptical arguments uh, uh, and give them the strongest hearing that you possibly can. And ultimately you do have to trust your own judgment, make up your own mind. But this should be, uh, if, if you're serious about it, a multi-year project. It's not something that, that will happen in a, in a short period of time. And it has to, I think, uh, go at two levels. One is uh, you are looking at things kind of at a more abstracted philosophical level, right? There's this argument and there's this counter argument and then there's this counter counter argument and you go through that process of how the arguments play out, you make up your mind. But then the other uh, level is to say there are these arguments and when they are applied, they have certain results, right? Mm -hmm. So if we are following the enlightenment project, that means something for how we think about 
women's rights and how we think about uh, slavery uh, and how we think about medicine and how we think about the economy. And so you judge an intellectual movement by its fruits, by its results. And so you then say, maybe you know, the, the pro-reason enlightenment philosophy has not worked out perfectly yet. That's still a philosophical project that we are engaged in. But to the extent that it has uh, been in place, what have been the results of the enlightenment? So uh, have we made progress in medicine, in achieving equal rights, in extending longevity, and so forth? And if, if so, then that, of course, is you know, strong evidence that the theory is getting something right. And then you do the same thing on the other side. Uh, you say, look, there are all these skeptical arguments and, and, uh, and more pessimistic understanding of human nature. And when those philosophies are put into practice, you know, kind of extreme skepticism or strong postmodernism, what are the results of that? And if you find it's that, you know, people are at each other's throats and, uh, and, and punching each other in the face and, uh, and, and blowing up buildings. Well, then that also tells you something about the, uh, the philosophy. Wow, that's, that, that's, you mentioned so many gems of, of insights here. And the big one for me was progress. So both movements, let's say postmodernism and modernism, they have their own notion of progress, but at the end of the day, we can, well, I can imagine that everyone as human beings want progress. So, you know, I don't, I, we'll, we'll come back to that. I don't think that's true, but that's an interesting point. Okay. Oh, but let's, let's take it as your working hypothesis. Yes. <laughs> no, d dive deep. If, if you don't think that we, we, we all want progress. Actually, you mentioned that in explaining postmodernism is that sometimes Mm, deconstructivism is the is the first uh, line of agenda, right? Deconstructing. Yes. So, yes. but at the same time, so, yeah. Uh, sorry to interrupt, but just uh, suppose we step out of high philosophy and just think about people you know individually. Do you think all of them are committed to progress in their lives? I would say that. I've been I, I've been a big thinker of everyone is trying to do their best given their their own set of abilities and or mindset or, or what have you. But okay. I do. Yeah, th I think. Yeah. I, yeah. Sorry. Yeah. I'll just I'll come back. I think that's wonderfully uh, optimistic about you, right? And it says a lot about you. But I don't think that's true. And maybe you are are lucky to have a good social circle. But is it not true? that there are many people, even at your age, who are very cynical. And they actually, they just sit on their sofa or their couch all day complaining and they don't get up and have a shower. They don't get up and clean up their apartment. They don't go out and get a job. They don't apply to university. Uh, they don't look after their health that they, in effect, have given up on their lives. Hmm. Uh, and it's unfortunately going to likely be over for them. They are never going to, to get better. And is it not true that there are many people, uh, perhaps uh, uh, in your social circle, not very many, who, when other people are trying very hard, they are critical of those people and they try to cut them down yeah. And instead of respecting and admiring and encouraging, they are sabotaging in various ways. So thinking about those people, I'm not so sure that all individuals, in fact, I'm pretty convinced of the opposite, are committed to progress. They don't want other people to succeed. And they don't think that they themselves are going to succeed in their lives. And that's wow. very 